Hey, and welcome back. If you've watched my channel for some time, you may remember a video I released back in February of this year, where I spent five days in the studio recording a jazz album with the great guitarist, Jason Gessel. Since the release of that record over this past spring, it's accumulated well over 100,000 streams across multiple platforms and has been featured on numerous editorial playlists on both Spotify and Apple Music. And with all of the singles and the full album now released, Jason booked a small tour across Wisconsin and Minnesota to celebrate and promote the album. Jason and I both live in Northeast Wisconsin, while the other two musicians, Josh and Jeremy, live across the state in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. With the distance between us, we haven't been able to get all four musicians together in one room to play since that recording, so it's going to be a lot of fun to not only catch up, but to play this music together again, but now for a live audience. It's currently Tuesday morning, July 11th, and today marks the first day of this run. Over the last few months in preparing for this tour, shows were booked in Stevens Point, Appleton, Milwaukee, Eau Claire, and Minneapolis. But unfortunately last night, we got word that the Milwaukee show was going to be canceled due to some unforeseen challenges. In any case, we're still playing the other four shows, and whether or not you consider this sort of string of shows a tour, I figured I'd take you along for the trip and let you see how this sort of DIY original jazz tour all comes together and gets executed. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and get packed up for this first show tonight. With our show tonight being just over an hour from my home, I didn't need to worry about packing much in terms of travel because we'd be coming home directly after this show. But with my ambition to document this week, I did need to pack some of my camera gear and a mobile recording setup. For anybody interested in this, I typically use my Sony ZV-1 as a main camera and then a smaller GoPro Hero 10 for the drive footage. And then when it comes to recording audio, I use a Zoom H6 if the sound production can't provide a board mix onto a flash drive. After I had all of this packed up, I could head upstairs and pack a few other things like some snacks and my iPad to use for referencing some charts during rehearsal. And for this show, I would need to bring my own drums, so I went ahead and gathered my homemade bop kit along with my jazz cymbals, drum hardware, and a few accessories. Lastly, I did need to pack some dressier clothes to wear for this show, and sure, I could have just changed now, but I really didn't feel like wearing my dress clothes for the entirety of the day, driving, setting up, rehearsing, and all of that, so I just packed them along to change later. Jason and his wife Kate swung by my house around 2 p.m. so that we could pack up everything into their car and carpool together out to Stevens Point. No tour bus or private jets for this one, but I have to say their Kia Telluride was a pretty comfortable way to travel. This first show in Stevens Point, along with the show we'd be playing the next day in Appleton, were both put on by a concert series called Jazz Coterie. The organizer and promoter of this series, Kyle, has been putting on pairs of shows like this for a few years now, and he regularly brings in national level talent like Benny Benack, Samara Joy, Miguel Zinan, and Joel Ross, but occasionally will book a more homegrown act, especially if there's something unique to share like an album release or a tribute show. I'm extremely thankful for what he's built, and it's added a lot to what is already a strong and thriving jazz community here in Northeast and Central Wisconsin. We arrived at our venue about 3.30 and began the process of hauling in all of our equipment and setting up. As you can see, the space isn't any sort of dedicated music or concert venue, but rather the local country club. I'm sure some musicians might look at this sort of thing as unfortunate or not ideal, but honestly, this room had great acoustics, and allows the host to draw off a strong network of members to advertise the event to, in addition to the regular music community. And in today's economy, where more and more jazz clubs struggle to keep their doors open, Jazz Coterie does a fantastic job at creating a space for music with this mobile jazz club approach. Once we finished setting up and sound checking, we then had a quick rehearsal to go back over this music. We weren't just playing simple jazz head charts, so even though all of us recorded on this album, it still took a bit of rehearsal to dust off these arrangements, along with a few new tunes we'd be playing. We wrapped up rehearsal around 5.30, and by that time, the country club's kitchen had finished our meals we ordered, and we were able to eat a nice dinner before playing our show at 7 p.m. We played to an audience of about 60 people for this show, and with it being the first on this run, there were a few kinks to work out, 
But having this rehearsal just a few hours earlier allowed me to have the trickier twists and turns of these tunes on my radar. The second set of our show wrapped up a little before 9 p.m., and then after a bit of connecting with some of the audience, we began tearing down while Kate headed up CD sales. Around 10 p.m., we packed everything back up into the Telluride and hit the road back to Oshkosh. And luckily, our pianist Josh ran over as we pulled away to let me know I had left my camera here while filming. Unlike most other tours that I've done, I was able to spend day two of this tour much like any other typical day at home, teaching lessons, working from my studio, and doing my own thing until about 4.30 p.m. But much like the day before, I began by packing up any camera and recording equipment I might need to document this show, and then I made my way upstairs to pack any musical equipment I'd need. Lucky for me, the rest of the shows on this tour all included house kits to play on, so I'd just need my own cymbals, snare drum, bass drum pedal, and a throne. Some of these venues do have snares, pedals, and thrones, but I always find it smart to bring them along just in case, and in situations where the house equipment is less than ideal, I can usually get by pretty comfortably with at least these pieces. Unfortunately, it was raining while I brought things out to my car, but on a positive note, at least we wouldn't be competing for a crowd with any outdoor events on this night. Since I was going for that business casual jazz look of a blazer over some black jeans and a v-neck, I didn't bother with bringing along a different set of clothes to wear for the show, and just got dressed mostly at home, knowing I wasn't going to be hauling a lot of gear or sitting around for too long. I left just a touch before 5pm so I could stop and pick up Jason at his place a mile or so down the road. After grabbing a few pieces of gear from his car, we hit the road and made the 30 minute drive up to Appleton where we'd be playing this second show of the tour. By carpooling for this night, it allowed Kate, Jason's wife, to come up a little closer to the showtime and not have to sit around and wait for us through setup, sound check, and dinner. The venue for tonight's show was what I consider to be the premier live music venue in our Fox Valley region, Gibson Community Music Hall. It's right in the middle of downtown Appleton and hosts lots of local, regional, and national level acts on one of their two stages four to five nights a week. The Jazz Coterie series typically hosts shows at a few different spots in the Fox Valley, but I was extremely grateful that this specific show we'd be doing was here in a room where I play quite often. We arrived on site just a bit after 5.30 and made our way to the smaller of the two stages to begin setting up. The house drum kit here is really great, and it's a kit I know quite well because I actually set them up with this kit in early 2020. It's a set of Gretsch Catalina bop drums, and back when I was running a monthly jazz show here, I offered to trade them these drums I had worked on for the more beat up of their two rock sets, so they would have some variety in the house kits they kept on site. We sound checked for a bit, and that gave us a chance to not only get comfortable in the room, but run over anything that felt iffy from the night before. By 6.30, we finished sound check, and we were brought in another nice meal courtesy of the event organizer. Downbeat for this show was at 8 p.m., and much like the night before, we played two sets of the same music to a great audience, only this time, we had somewhere between 80 to 100 people there to listen.
This show was really special for me, as this is my local community, and I had plenty of friends and fellow musicians I play with often come out to hear the music. For most of them, it was the first time they could hear Josh and Jeremy, who were like my big brothers in my college years living in Eau Claire. Naturally, after the show I waited a while before packing up because I had so many people I wanted to say hi to, but around 11 or so, I gathered my cymbals, snare, and hardware pieces and made my way back to the parking garage to load up into my Prius and hit the road back to Oshkosh. Of course, I did make a stop for a late night snack at my favorite place, Quick Trip, but I made it home around midnight or so and called it a night. Since Thursday's performance in Milwaukee was canceled, I was able to take advantage of the day off and spend most of my time until Friday afternoon teaching lessons, working on some video projects, and laying low at home. But with the final two shows of this tour being out of my regional market, I needed to pack for a few days of travel and staying overnight. So after I finished gathering all of my clothes, toiletries, and chargers I'd need to get by for the weekend, I made my way back downstairs and once again collected some of my audio video gear along with my computer so I could get some work done with my free time this weekend. As I mentioned before, both venues we'd be playing in Eau Claire and Minneapolis have house drum kits for me to use, so along with my overnight bag, I could get by with just my cymbals, snare, bass pedal, and throne. Before taking off, I made sure to let my dogs out one last time and then filled up my water bottle with some ice water before letting the pups back in and heading out on my three hour drive to Eau Claire. Originally, Jason and I were going to carpool to these shows together, but after looking at hotel prices for two nights, he decided it would be cheaper to drive his RV out and have us stay on there instead. Eau Claire is a special place for me as it's where I went to college and spent some of my most formative years as a musician developing my craft. I always look forward to getting back there to visit old friends and make music with former collaborators. The venue for this night's show was a small club called The Lakely. It's a very intimate room, but with a great stage and atmosphere, and with it being part of a small boutique hotel, there's usually a nice crowd built in regardless of who else shows up. I left Oshkosh about 3 p.m., and after some serious downpour of rain in the last hour of my drive, I pulled into the Lakely a little after 6 p.m. I was the first of the band to arrive, so I went ahead and grabbed the house drum kit from the little utility room off the side of the stage. Although this venue didn't open until after I'd moved away, these drums were originally the house set at a restaurant where I played most Friday and Saturday nights with Josh and Jeremy throughout the last three or four years of my time in Eau Claire. It's another Gretsch Catalina club kit in traditional bop sizes, and these things have been used multiple nights every week for the last 15 to 20 years at this point. Due to the size of this room, we didn't need any sound production, but our sound engineer from Tuesday night decided to come out and record us on a vintage analog tape recorder that he had recently acquired and wanted to get some experience using. <laughs> really great to play for some old and new friends from a town that I have so much connection with and was especially humbling to see so many excellent musicians out in the crowd who came to check out our music. Hey. Our show wrapped up around 10 p.m. and I went ahead and got the little packing I had to do over with so I could go ahead and catch up with some of my friends. We left the venue a little after 11 and stopped over at one of our favorite bars, The Joint, for a few drinks, but I'm thankful that we didn't end up recording any of that, and I'm gonna just fast forward to when we made it back to Jason and Kate's RV to call it a night. 
Saturday morning was pretty relaxed, and I figured before I took off for the day, I'd give you a quick tour of the setup we had in the RV for the last two nights of this tour. I was able to sleep out on a futon style setup in the front, and as you can see, there's plenty of space to work at a table, prepare food, and hang out. Working our way to the back, there's a shower, a master suite with a large bed and storage, and then of course, a small bathroom with a sink and toilet. Overall, not a bad way to spend two nights while saving a few bucks on this tour. Although the RV was plenty comfortable, I decided to get out and do some work at a local coffee shop for a few hours. And honestly, even when I'm at home and not traveling, I find this sort of setup really productive. Around 2 p.m., I went back to the RV so that Jason and I could pack up anything we'd need for tonight's show and hit the road. We left around 2.30 and made the 90 minute trip to Minneapolis, Minnesota, where we'd be playing at Crooner's Supper Club. This venue has become a nationally recognized jazz club in the past few years, and they have four different venues and stages, all within their one physical location. We were scheduled to play in one of their smaller spaces, the Dunsmore Room, which hosts a lot of their jazz concerts. Once we got inside, I went over to the house kit and got it set up to my liking, and if this kit looks familiar, that's because it used to belong to Minnesota native Dave King. I remember him using this kit on his Rational Funk videos, and I believe this specific set had bamboo shells. In any case, it sounded great and was a treat to play on such a nice instrument for this show. Since the venue was gracious enough to provide a sound engineer, we spent some time checking levels and getting comfortable in the room, but then after that we could head down to the green room they had in the basement and relax until it was time to play our show. Our show was only a single set from 6.30 to 8 p.m. due to all of the other performances that would be happening this night on the adjoining stages. But after we wrapped up our show, we enjoyed a nice complimentary meal from the venue, and we finished packing up and hit the road between 8.30 or 9 and made our way back to Eau Claire. On the drive home, it really hit us that we had just finished the final show, and aside from still needing to travel home the next day, the tour was done and very much a success in what we'd hoped for. Before making our way back to the RV, we made a stop downtown because on this specific night, the Eau Claire Jazz Festival was hosting a summer jazz crawl, so we went down to check out some of the local live music going on before calling it a night. I woke up around 7.30 on Sunday and didn't wait too long before I packed up all of my stuff to make my trip back to Oshkosh. As much as it would have been nice to hang out a little longer in Eau Claire, I had another gig to get back for, and I wanted to make sure I'd have time to go home and not have to rush off right away to another show. Over the next three hours on my way back home, it was a great chance to reflect on the past week of shows. In today's world, it's becoming increasingly challenging to tour on a DIY level, and whether or not you consider this string of shows a true tour, I'm really grateful to have opportunities like this to travel and share my music with new audiences. Overall, we played four shows across two different states, traveling just under 800 miles in total. We played for audiences ranging from a small intimate crowd enjoying music with conversation and food to a packed room full of engaged listeners. But maybe most important, the four of us that recorded this album late last year finally got a chance to play this music together again, and this time on stage in front of other people. It's experiences like this that keep me excited about the work I get to do as a musician, even through the tougher parts of my career. If you've made it this far in the video, thanks for watching, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this approach to touring and this trip as a whole, so leave a comment down below to let me know. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving it a thumbs up 
and subscribe to my channel to stay up to date on future video releases. And until next time, thanks. Thank you.